everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I approach color grading with a photo I took with an old iPhone 5 a few years ago. I feel like everybody or most people have access to a phone camera these days, but not everybody can afford a nice camera that captures pictures in RAW format, which is what you usually use to color grade photographs on more powerful programs like Lightroom. But today we'll be using Photoshop um, to color grade photos from our phone, like this one. So here is a photograph I already, I already color graded, and this is the original. You can see it's a pretty dramatic difference. Um, the original is pretty dull. There's um, kind of weak lighting information here, and if you're just a casual photographer that wants to know how to improve your color grading or if you're an artist who wants to take better reference photos this is a good way to kind of push the colors in your photograph and um, make it better for whatever purposes you intend so let's start what I usually do first is I will make a layer adjustment, vibrance, and we'll just crank up the vibrance all the way to 100 um, and see how it feels. Uh, right now I'm actually kind of liking how vibrant the greens are and how warm the stones feel. It's kind of what I remember being at this place at that time it was sunset so the warmth of the stones feel good to me and the, especially the lighting around the trees and the entrance of this door here. What doesn't feel good to me is how this road is looking with all this artifacting going on and this is the result of like just the limitations of the phone camera but we can fix this. Um, you can't always fix it with every photo so it's kind of like trial and error and experimentation but what I usually do to fix this is I'll add a selective color adjustment layer and it looks like possibly the road it might be um, color-wise in the blue channel here. So I'll check out the blue channel and I'll start messing around with the sliders. So you can see here that the sliders are actually affecting the road and only the road. And I'm going to knock back this slider, the magenta slider, all the way to the left here just to get rid of that artifacting but you still get the sense that it's too teal and it doesn't look super natural so what I'm going to do is play around with the other adjustment layers and get it back to something that feels more natural and what I remember and which would be more of this kind of cool gray here so I feel like that feels about right just taking that teal out and making it more of that kind of cobalt, cobalt, gray blue. So, just gonna leave that there. So, we fixed the road and just did that. Um, from here, I feel like I want to kind of tweak the greens of the ivy and the plants and all the beautiful foliage in the scene. So. I'll do another selective color adjustment and I'll check out the green channel here and mess around with the sliders here. You can see that you can pull the greens to this kind of more yellow color or kind of this more candy jungle green color. Um, I feel like I want things to kind of stay somewhere in the middle. And with these other sliders, you can also see how things might adjust. Um, what I do like about adjusting these greens is I kind of do want to push some of the cyan channel to the left here because it feels like there's more color vibration happening in these greens, which I like, rather than it just being like straight jungle green. I feel like I'm getting like some jungle green and some yellow here, some yellow green here, which is kind of cool. Um, and with these other sliders here, you can you can kind of tweak how that feels, and also like how vibrant things feel. 
So feel free to mess around with that and just see what feels natural to you. It's going to take some time and trial and error to, to kind of feel like what colors feel natural and right to, to you. And this is kind of the fun of the process. Just kind of trust your instincts and um, just, yeah, just have fun and kind of mess around with these layers and just to see what feels natural and good to you. And to me, this feels pretty good here. Um, so that's good with the foliage. I feel like you can see if you turn this adjustment layer on and off, and we'll just label this foliage. And actually this road, we can turn these things on and off just to see the difference that it's made. So before we get all this ugly artifacting, we get this like gross magenta stuff on the road. And after our color adjustments, we fix that. And with the foliage, we kind of get um, these greens that feel a little bit samey. And turning this foliage um, just when you're on off, you kind of just get just a little bit more information and color um, variation in the scene, which I like. Uh, the next thing I would probably want to adjust is the, the way the lighting, the golden lighting here hits this doorway and the tops of this tree here. So I'll make another selective color layer and I'll dig into the yellow channel and just kind of push this more, a little bit more golden like exaggerated just a tiny bit but not enough for it to like you know hurt my eyes or anything so that's feeling pretty good to me I like my yellows to feel more golden I, um, especially with photos you know taken during sunsets and sunrises it what feels it's what feels natural to me um, and that's feeling pretty good and we'll name this lighting and we'll turn this on and off too. As you can see, like this is off, this is on. You get more of that golden hour hit, which is just sort of the sweet spot. And we'll do one more final adjustment. And um, in this kind of mini tutorial, I also kind of want to do a couple of things that help emulate that kind of film photography look. And one of the things is uh, I feel like with film photography you don't always get like super super dark blacks you always get um, shadows that are lifted a little bit so what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of lightness to the photo and which is I'll do like I don't know bump it up like f at four plus four for lightness and I'll call that good so I'm just gonna group these together real quick just to show you all um, the difference. So here's before and after. Before and after. Personally, if I was an artist, I feel like this would be a more interesting photograph to paint from um, if I took this as a reference, for example. So those are the results we got. And there's one more thing I want to do. Um, I want to make this feel more like a film photograph. So I'll just take everything and do and merge everything and copy it into a new layer. And there is one little trick I like to do to just kind of get rid of like just small distracting elements. Like I don't super love this sign. So what I'll do is I'll go to content aware fill and actually we will not do that because it's different mm. okay we're going to cancel this i'm sorry she might be a different place Okay, so we have that selected. We'll do a content aware fill and I'm gonna hit okay. 
and that essentially takes information from around the signage and it gets rid of it completely. It's your choice if you want to have stuff like that in your photography, um, but I decided I want to get rid of it. So I'll merge that change with that layer. I'll duplicate that layer again. And with film photography, there's always a little bit of slight blurriness, kind of softness of the image. Um, with stuff like phone photography and kind of the um, more expensive cameras, I feel like sometimes there's too much sharpness and too much information. So what I like to do is I like to blur out and soften the image a bit. So we'll go to Gaussian blur. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it for real, but let's just go with that and actually not preview. I'll probably put like, put it at nine pixels. Did that do anything? That did not do anything. Okay. Um, let's see what happened here. Oh, it's because I had selected a little pixel. So let's try that again. Blur, Gaussian blur, and if you zoom into the photograph, you'll see that 0.9 pixels already is a 0.9 pixels, maybe too much. So let's just knock it down a little bit, maybe like point, just a little bit more. Maybe just, actually, let's start with a radius of 0.9 or 1. To me, this is a little bit too soft, so I'll actually knock down the opacity just a little bit, maybe 70, 85% here. So to me, there's if you turn the layer on and off, you notice a difference, especially with this really, really busy plant right here. Um, I just feel like the highlights are less distracting now because um, there's like less going on. It's it's really subtle, but these are the things I usually do um, as a final pass for my photo. And then as a final thing, I will add a layer for noise, kind of like film grain noise. And what I do to help emulate that is I usually do a neutral gray layer, and then I go to filter, noise, um, and I add a noise layer. And the amount is totally up to you, it's totally subjective. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to keep the amount somewhere between 7 and 10. So let's do that. and. Then you'll see that the noise has a bunch of color information in it, this, these kind of like magenta specks. So what I'll do is I'll just turn it black and white um, and then I'll do an overlay adjustment. And if you zoom in, sorry this is not my computer, so I'm doing things a little differently you'll see this very, very subtle foam green here. And with the opacities, I can knock it back however much or less you want. Um, but I'm actually kind of liking how heavy this green feels. And um, so I'm just going to keep it actually at uh, 80, 80%, around 80% feels good to me. So, there you have it. Here's our final color graded piece with some small adjustments to help it feel more like like a like a photograph from a film camera. So let's see what the before and after looks like. So before and after. Hope this mini tutorial was useful um, to you and I really hope you have fun taking pictures and have fun trying out color grading. Thanks for watching.